Hello and welcome to Floral Portraits with Miss Adriana. Today we are going to go over how to do some floral portraits and I wanted to take you through some of the prep work I did to get prepared for the last photo shoot I did which was for floral portraits. The equipment that I used and also kind of how to choose the right equipment for you because you don't necessarily need to use the same equipment that I used. Um, we'll also be talking about the photo shoot day, how that day kind of came about, what I did to prepare for that day, and then um, some of the diagrams of where everything was positioned and then at the end we will go through a couple steps of post-processing as well to begin with I always do prep work uh, the preparation for good work tomorrow is to do good work today and that is very reasonable and true I tend to uh, make sure that I am ready to work especially if I'm going to be working with a model I don't want to waste their time as well as I don't want them to waste mine um, sometimes you're going on location and you may only have that location for a certain amount of time so being prepared prepared is definitely the way to go when you're going to be doing a photo shoot. So some of the things you should do is to scout the area ahead of time. Uh, so I usually go look for uh, the places that I want to shoot, especially if I'm doing an outdoor shoot. Kind of look at the terrain, see if there's any, um, you know, hiccups, like is it too hard to get to? Will the equipment survive the trip? Uh, is it too remote? Uh, things like that. So scouting the area ahead of time is, is very good. Um, checking the weather. So if I know I'm going to be shooting in the next few days, I track the weather consistently because you never know, even in the middle of summer, even in the height of summer, you may get some random showers. So you really want to make sure that you know what kind of uh, weather is going to be. Also, the weather dictates the kind of lighting that you're going to have because the sun is your main source of lighting. So knowing whether it's going to be a clear day, if it's going to be cloudy, or if it's going to be a hazy day that also will impact the look of your images. I also do some prep work with my model so I tend to take a few uh, images of the area that I like so if I find an area that I like I'll grab my phone and I'll just snap a couple pictures just so that I can remember later on what it looked like um, and also because you know one tree looks like another and I may forget by tomorrow what the tree or bush that I was looking at two days or two weeks ago looked like. So that image is a good reference point for me to kind of look, look for those uh, land, landscape markers. So I kind of show this image to my model and I say, look, we're going to be shooting here in front of this. Um, you know, let's talk about some poses that we may want to try and things like that. I also ask about like allergies or... Um, you know, asthma or things like that, because if they have a hard time um, hiking out to an area, that's the last thing you want is to get there and your model is in no condition to shoot. So talk to your model, make sure they're okay with the location, make sure that, you know, there's nothing that's going to make them physically ill while you're shooting and, you know, let them know what the kind of weather that they're looking at so they can prepare also, you know, if they're gonna be wearing makeup and and it's going to be a humid day they may want to bring extra makeup with them or they may use extra setting spray so that it doesn't you know melt on their face or if it's going to be a cool day and even you know they may have like a couple of clothing changes and they may need to bring like a couple blankets or things like that so work with your model make sure you both have a plan of action ready and then choose and prep your gear. So you want to choose the pieces of equipment that you want to take and then you want to prep it. So you don't want to overload yourself. Don't take every single piece of equipment with you. I know it's really tough and you know as you build your photography kit you have more and more things and you're like but maybe I'll need this but maybe I'll need that. Yes there's always the maybe I'll need it so I'll take it and you know better be safe than sorry but if you're hiking out to a location especially if it's remote the last thing you want to do is bear yourself down with um, extra equipment that you may not use 
take one to two lenses um, take um, you know if you're gonna work with tripod or a monopod take that with you uh, definitely bring you know cloths to keep cleaning the front element of your lens because there are so many times when you're outdoors that you may get a random raindrop or just you know humidity condensation all those things for condensation I always put silica packets in my camera kit so I always make sure that there's at least one or two in there to absorb any moisture moisture from the air and then um, I also take plenty of water um, and make sure you have some extra snacks nuts are great uh, jerky is great just to give you that boost of energy because you never know how long you're going to be out there and um, unforeseen circumstances can always arise especially if you're going remote so you definitely want to be prepared if you're going to be in an area that you know very well or you know if you're just in your backyard then you have access to all your gear um, or you have the ability to go get more gear if you need it but preparing to be in remote areas is a little tougher and you need more prep work than just working in your backyard so materials you need camera lights action uh, choosing the right tools for the job is very important choosing a lens so Lens, it, a lens is going to dictate a lot of things about your image. Um, the field of view, so how much you can see. Uh, most portraits are taken within the 75 to 105 millimeter range. It's a good narrow field of view. It gives you, you know, just enough a viewpoint um, so you can back out or back in however you want portraits also tend to have very shallow depths of field and that is very dependent upon your lens so you want to make sure you check your lens and see what capabilities it has so let's break down the anatomy of a lens so you have the focal range. This is the field of view your lens is capable of. The focal range can be either fixed or variable. So is your lens a 35 to 150 millimeter lens? Is it a 28 to 75? Or is it just a 50 millimeter lens? If it's a 50 millimeter lens only, that means it's got a fixed focal range. So you know it's a prime lens and things like that but you can have that variable focal range like a 35 to 105 or 150 and that gives you some playroom um, but prime lenses are great for uh, portrait photography the one that I use is actually an 85 millimeter prime lens from Samyang and I love it it's fantastic um, and it wasn't extremely expensive but Lenses tend to be um, expensive either way. Then you have the aperture. So this is how much a lens opens when you're taking an image. Portrait lenses usually have wide openings and the reason for that is it gives you very shallow depths of field which makes your um, backgrounds really nice, soft and out of focus giving emphasis to your subject. Then you have motors. So cameras, uh, or I should say lenses, can have electronic motors that assist with focus, shake, and macro. So you will find some lenses that are fully manual, which means that you have to focus manually. It can make it for a challenge when you are working in the field because you're on rougher terrain and um, you know you're moving back and forth and. If you're working in shallow depths of field, it's going to be really difficult to do manual focusing. Um, the vibration motors are really great, especially when you're out in the field and maybe you are moving around. So your breathing is, at, you know, you're breathing harder. Um, and that breathing motion is actually going to be introduced into your images. So a vibration reduction motor really helps compensate for a lot of that and then some lenses have this macro feature which is nothing to do with portraits I just bring it up because it's a type of motor and then lastly we have glass elements so uh, 
a lens is comprised of a lot of different elements of glass that live inside of that barrel. It's not just the glass in the front and the back. With Inside of the lens, there's going to be little groups of glasses that when you rotate the lens to focus or the lens focus auto focuses automatically, those lenses, you know, cause refraction and they do all kinds of stuff. But the, hi the, the higher quality lenses have higher quality glass which directly impacts the quality of your images so the glass within these lenses is as unique as a fingerprint um, you can get a really great lens at a very cheap price or you can pay thousands of dollars and the lens is really you know it doesn't do well because the glass in it wasn't um, quality checked as much as it should have been so other equipment that you may want to take with you on your photo shoot is um, a reflector. So a reflector is a very inexpensive way to shape light in mixed lighting set situations. And that's going to be a definite yes when you're outdoors because the sun and uh, the way clouds move uh, is definitely going to be making light change constantly. Um, and then some other gear that you may want to take with you are like tripods, flashes, a light meter, a monopod, and garbage bags. Uh, you may be asking yourself, garbage bags? Well, I can tell you from experience that um, I've worked outdoors and um, a garbage bag is a great way to save your camera. So whether it's on the tripod or you have it handheld uh, you don't want to be fumbling trying to put your gear away the best thing to save your camera is to toss it in something and seal it up so i usually i usually use like large garbage bags if it's on the tripod i put the garbage bag over the camera and the tripod so that way it's covered um, and you know i can carry that all the way to the car covered and then in the car where it's dry, I will break everything down and put it away. Um, if I'm hand holding it, you know, I usually have like the garbage pack, the garbage bag in a side pocket um, that I can quickly get it out. Especially if you've been switching lenses all day, you may not have as much room to just shove your camera in your bag without it being sealed and water can still get in there. So putting it into a garbage bag and then just placing it in your um, camera bag is going to keep it nice and dry. So photo shoot day. Photography is a story I fail to put into words by Dustin Sparks. And I think that's very true. I find that with photography, I try to tell a story or I try to capture a moment that, um, you know, I see, I love candid moments. It's one of my favorite aspects of photography. I love to walk around at events and just take pictures of people's reactions to different things. I love that. But sometimes you have to do like a photo shoot and this was a great photo shoot day. Uh, we did a couple different uh, photo shoots. One, it was in a tree in a backyard, in my neighbor's backyard. And the other one was some bushes that were, um, um, on a trail so we went hiking for a little bit and I found these bushes that had some flowers and then the third part of, and and I like the bushes but they didn't have flowers so I actually used some artificial flowers uh, so let's take a look at what photo shoot day looks like so setup setup is really important now I was working with um, my daughter so you know if she is uh, impatient that's her problem I'm still gonna do my setup but she usually helps me with the setup but if I'm working with a model and it's a more professional setting I usually give myself about an hour to an hour and a half to go you know in, in ahead of the model to make sure that I can set up my gear to make sure that I can look at the terrain because just because I saw that terrain two weeks ago doesn't mean that there couldn't have been you know some flash flood flooding or you know somebody drove through there or the terrain just is completely different or all the flowers are gone you know 
anything can change in a matter of couple days um, outdoors. So check your equipment and bring extras. By bring extras, I mean bring extra SD cards, bring ba extra batteries. Those are the two things you're going to need the most outdoors. You never know when an SD card is going to fail. And if you're going to be shooting for prolonged periods of time, having an extra battery is really going to keep you working. Prep the site. So this is why I like to arrive early before the model. I go and I look for obstacles or safety hazards, um, you know, especially if shoes are involved. You know, this was more portraits, but if I'm doing full length shots and I know that they're going to be wearing um, shoes, I usually make sh you know, that I want to see the shoes and they're slinky or whatever. I usually make sure to tell them to, you know, wear tennis shoes to the um, to get to the site and then at the site they can change and then coach your model so take them through your process once they get there you know you can quickly talk them through like this are these are the kind of shots that we're going to do even though you've probably already done some prep work with your model you, it doesn't hurt to re-coach them they may f have forgotten what you said the last time you met with them so coach them through let them know what you're going to be doing especially if you're going to be working with props um you know like smoke bombs and things like that you've got maybe seconds on some things where you have to capture the look so you would have to say hey look we're gonna pop the smoke bomb it's gonna be going for about 10 seconds within these 10 seconds this is the look that i'm trying to achieve these are the poses that i'm i want to do so coach your model through all of these things and make sure they're part of the process. Don't just, you know, tell them stand here, look here, move here, get them involved so that they feel and a sense a kind of a sense of responsibility to the work that you're trying to achieve and also so that they feel gratified that the end product that, you know, you're trying to get to. So Lighting is the biggest part of what an outdoor photography shoot is. I mean, you can bring extra flashes and things like that to really compensate for lighting situations. But I wanted to do like a bare minimum type of shoot outdoors where all I was depending on was the sun and a reflector. And so that makes for some very challenging situations, especially depending on the type of day you're going to shoot. So on a clear day, you're going to get some really hard shadows, especially under the eyes. They're going to get really shadowed and under the chin. So like on the neck, because the sun is coming from, you know, above and it's really casting those shadows down. So you may want to use a reflector to kind of fill in those shadows, um, unless that's the look you're going for. A cloudy day is going to give you some soft, even lighting, but it's going to be less intense. So that means your shutter speeds are going to get slower, which means you may have to balance your aperture against your shutter speed. But it being daytime, um, you know, if it's midday, you're going to have at least enough lighting. But it's a, if it's a cloudy, almost sunsetty time, you may find some challenges in getting enough shutter speed to compensate and still getting those nice soft out of background focus uh, backgrounds and then a partly cloudy day so this is going to be unpredictable it's going to be a mix of clear and cloudy day lighting which means you're going to have shadows highlights and the lighting is constantly going to change um, I believe on this day it said it was going to be partly cloudy and we had two clouds in the sky. I was like, oh, okay, so not partly cloudy, basically a clear day. Um, and then, the, of course, those clouds decided to um, go into the sun and I got really big shadows. Uh, so I ended up having to change all my settings again until the clouds pass. So partly cloudy day is where you're really going to be making a lot of changes to compensate for the quick changes in lighting. So pose and positioning. 
Here you can see, um, this is kind of almost how every shot was taken. I was just moving um, around the uh, model and having another person with the reflector kind of catching the light and bouncing it back onto my subject. Um, and we were just kind of moving back and forth in different directions, but this is basically the setup that it was. So my model was here in front of the bush, and then the bush was kind of you know getting quite a bit of sunlight and reflecting it some on her back as well um the sun was actually more positioned here so it was kind of i positioned my model so that it was uh backlit so i was using the sun almost as a hair light and then i was using the reflector to bounce the light back onto her face or from sometimes from underneath up to her face I of course was the camera so I kept moving back and forth and I just had um, the person that was assisting me kind of move with me and try to bounce as much light back into my subject and that's what I did for every single shot including the ones where we were by the tree I just had the tree um, do some kind of speckled lighting which means we had areas of really high highlights and then we had really deep shadows as well so post-processing um, I will see you in Lightroom in a moment and we will kind of take a look at some of the changes we can make and why we need to make those changes so here we are in Lightroom and I've already imported all the images. These are the ones that I decided to edit. Um, I'm not going to edit all of these on the video. I'm just going to probably do one or two to kind of talk about a few things. But usually my process when I am doing um, when I'm doing post processing is I'm going to take off all the filters filters off so as you can see I had a lot more images quite a lot more <laughs> I usually kind of go through them you know and I'll double click the image now here I was just testing the camera I was kind of like just look at me I want to see what we're looking at um, but I usually kind of go through them and then what I'm doing as well is I'm zooming in and I usually zoom into the area of the eyes because I want to make sure the eyes are in focus. And as you can see here, I am slightly soft and because I was working at, um, I believe 1.4. Um, let's see if it shows in my metadata. Yep. I was working at 1.4. I really wanted the challenge of working in extreme shallow depth of field and I wanted my background as out of focus as possible. Um, but it makes for some challenging situations because if you focus like even on the nose, then the eyes are completely out of focus. And if you focus on the eyes, uh, chances are the nose is a tiny bit soft, but I prefer the eyes to be in focus. So then I go through and this one looks much better. It's getting clearer. And I kind of ch check the ones that I like. So this is the one that I ultimately liked. This eye is very much in focus. As you can see, just her slight tilt of the head was enough to get this eye out of focus. And she's not even tilted that much. But this eye's uh, in focus and this eye is a tiny bit soft. But I can live with that. And so what I usually do is I flag this image. As you can see, it has a little flag versus this one does not have a flag. So I flag the images I want to work with and then I go to the filters and I just see the flagged images. So now I will kind of scroll through them and I usually kind of look to see what changes I want to make and um, what are the challenges I'm facing. So I just kind of go through them a little bit. So starting at the beginning, as you can see, I kept placing her with the sun at her back. And so most of her face was in shadow. Not necessarily a bad thing. I don't... Um, I don't feel horrible about the way that it looks. I actually kind of like it. But if I want to make some adjustments, I'm going to go to my develop module. And then I can look at the shadows and maybe pull up on the shadows a bit. 
and so that just kind of brings her face more into um you know brings more uh exposure into her face so i can kind of split the difference and maybe bring down the highlights a little bit and i like that um and the exposure I'm gonna leave alone. I think the exposure is good. As you can see, I have quite, um, because she was wearing this uh, fuzzy sweater and it's white, the highlight here is completely blown out. But, you know, it's not a deal breaker for me. Uh, I still chose the image. Here again, uh, we have quite a bit of blown out here, but her face is pretty well um, in focus and I don't mind the lighting on it. I wanted to have dappled lighting which gave me shadows and highlights so I can just kind of split the difference between the two. And then here again I asked her to put her hand up because I wanted it to create those spots of highlight on her face. So this one I actually don't want to make changes to the shadows because I want to keep those shadows deep. And I think the highlights are fine because there's just enough information in those highlights. I can still see the texture on her skin. I think it, it's only up to on here on her face little pinky finger that the information is kind of lost in the highlights but it's okay so for this one you know I'm gonna look more at the skin I don't tend to do skin work in uh, Lightroom but you can with the um, heel brush uh, or spot removal tool so if I want to get rid of like a spot or something I can do that by just painting it over and if I don't like the spot it shows I can go there so I know she has a little tiny scar here she doesn't really like it but it's fine and I will just do that and there's not much to do honestly since young skin is very nice so that's one of the ways that you can um, Kind of fix skin in Lightroom and then here this is probably one of my favorite of the bunch um, I really wanted the uh, color to pop in this one so what I'm going to do the lighting I think is okay I may bring up the shadows a tiny bit and then what I want to take a look at is the color so we have hue, we have saturation, and luminance. So saturation is how intense, luminance is how bright, bright, and hue, I can change the color of the flowers to a different color. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to look at the saturation, and I'm probably going to look at reds and magentas. So I'm going to increase the reds, which is also going to boost the reds in her shirt, and then the magentas as well boost them a little bit and then I am going to lighten it a tiny bit I don't want it to get too light but I'm gonna darken the magentas so if you want to do a comparison you can see before and after so you see how much I boosted these colors here that's a big difference. It's a subtle difference, but it's a good difference. So I like the boost in the colors. And then let's take a look at maybe this one. So in this one, the light changed right before I started taking the series of shots. And so the sun um, kind of was starting to peak behind a cloud. And so I got a nice hair light going, so I my highlights aren't so overblown on her hair but it also put her face into a lot more shadow so I'm going to go to our shadows and I'm going to boost them a bit but then instead of just boosting the exposure because that's going to overexpose in other areas I am actually going to use what is called um, the adjustment brush 
and I'm going to make sure that this well I can actually increase the shadows a little bit I'm going to boost the exposure here so if you can see we have like two rings the inner ring is where it's going to be at a hundred percent intensity and the outer ring is kind of a feathering of the effect so I'm going to paint on her face and down her neck and up until the um, highlights and then I'm going to start that pulling that slider of the exposure and that balances it out a little bit more Maybe. so then let's take a look at a before and after I'm just gonna click done here to accept those changes and then let's look at before and after so that you can see is a big change now it did again boost the background so I can start to play with it a little more but here were just some simple tips and tricks and changes that you can make to your portrait photography in Lightroom I hope that you uh, found this uh, video entertaining or at least learn something from it and I will see you next time for another photography video. Bye!